Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. Joining me now is Adrian Tracy. He is the defensive end for the Hamilton Tie Cats. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's so great to have you. You have had an incredible year up until just recently. Yes. Uh, you were a strong part of the Tie Cats um, pass rush and got injured. What happened to you? Uh, we had an away game in BC um, in pregame warmups. I unfortunately tore my tricep and that subsequently ended my season for the year. And how are you doing yeah. now? Um, I'm better now. I'm better. I won't say that I'm great because, to be honest, it was a rough patch. Uh, a lot of different emotions I was going through, and um, God was just working with me in that moment. And now He's slowly showing me exactly what He was He was crafting in that injury. So. You are a person of faith, but you were saying you didn't always use your platform mm -hmm. for good. So tell me about what happened. What was right. that transition like? So I was blessed enough to get drafted to the NFL in 2010, and uh, my second year there, I was uh, fortunate enough to win the Super Bowl with the Giants. And in that moment, I got caught up in what it was to be a football player, to be a winner, uh, to be in one of the biggest media markets in the world. And I lost sight of kind of the things that my mom and my father had brought me up on that led me to that success. So when I was in the environment of the bright lights in the big city, kind of, you know, the things that got me there as far as my faith, you know, daily reading of the Bible, staying plugged in with a good group, those things kind of fell to the wayside. And I found myself a year and a half two years later on the couch at my mom's house, out of football completely. And I think that in addition to, you know, guys showing me like, look, you gotta come back to your roots and what it is that got you there in the first place. It was more so me realizing that, you know, as an adult man, like now it's time for you to stand up on your own feet and realize who you wanna be as a Christian. And for me personally, that was a, a crossroads that I needed at that time. Uh, and it, it led me to Hamilton, which led me to here. So. And tell me about that moment of surrender, because it was pretty dramatic. Like, you cried out to God. You were completely honest. Yeah, so I um, had a moment where I was on the couch at home in Virginia at my parents' house, and my mom came down the stairs, and she was like, are you done? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? She was like, I've sat here for three weeks and gone up and down the stairs, see you on the couch and not move from that spot. And she was like, remember who you were before football came into your life. Mm. And I was like, wow. So... The door opened for me to come to Hamilton. I came up here and I was having a pretty decent season and it ended and I didn't feel that f fulfillment, you know, that excitement that um, like I accomplished something. I didn't have that, that void was, was missing and it didn't make any sense because statistically I had my best year, professionally in football, not just here. And so I had a moment right before I went up for the Grey Cup to do some, uh, some community service work and work uh, with athletes in action. I had a moment in my living room where I literally was like, God, I can't, I can't do this on my own. Like, I've tried and I've tried and I've failed miserably. And this feeling that I have of being unsatisfied, I know like can only be filled by you. And I don't know what it is you want me to do and I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but like, you have me now. Like, I'm, I'm done fighting and I'm done trying to grab the wheel and act like I know what I'm doing when I clearly don't. And it was, it was literally that moment of, kind of being honest, not only with myself, but with just that emotion and that environment. Cause a lot of times we can think what we know is true, but until we verbalize it, do we not feel kind of that weight lifted off? So me surrendering verbally literally was like that burden was off of my shoulders. And I, I, I fell on the floor and I started crying. And it was in that process that I felt like he was like, all right, like this is what I've been waiting for, for you to finally surrender and really mean what you say. And literally in that span from this was 2017, like the end of 2017 till now, just the ways that he's been working or the ways that I've been able to see him work because I finally, I finally decided to be like, all right, God, like, let me see what you're doing. Like, turn my TV off and let me focus on what it is that you have. And he's just been, he's just been working amazing wonders like I've, I've never seen before. So if you were to look at the Adrian Tracy on the couch at your mom's house and the Adrian <laughs> Tracy today on the injured list, both right, hard, right, yeah, like yeah. hard times in your life, yeah. what's different? My mentality. Um, I was feeding myself with the right fruit. I was in my Bible. I had Steve Kearns Bible study, you know, helping and doing chapel. I had uh, some guys on the team that I would kind of confide in. When I was in New York, it was just me. I was just focused on me. I was worried about what I was doing and how I could get better and how I could help my family instead of being in a situation where I realized that everything that I've gone through is for, for a reason, it's for a purpose, and it's not just for me. And the span of me being here for the five years that I've been up here in, 
and Hamilton, there's countless guys that come from the States and from Canada who I've sit down in some, <laughs> some interesting situations, whether it be just us in the locker room or in the sauna or in the, in the training room, and we will have legitimate hearts to hearts where I'm like, wow, God, I went through this exact same thing like two years ago. And he's like, and this is why you had to go through it. And I realized that a lot of the things that I, I've went through thus far aren't necessarily for me. You know, I can glean something from that in the process, but I've learned that this is for somebody else. It's just that they don't know who I know. And I'm kind of that bridge, just like we didn't know Christ. I mean, we didn't know God, the relationship between God and ourselves, right? God's perfect, we're imperfect. These things should not be able to intermingle, to relate. But that's why we have Jesus. He's the one that bridged the gap between the two. He's God in the flesh, but he's, he's human as well. So he could feel our emotions, but he could also tell us, look, from this standpoint, this is how you're supposed to act. This is how you're supposed to walk. These are the things that you're supposed to be on earth for, the fulfillment of my kingdom, you know? And it's like, if I can at least give a little glimpse of what that hope did for me when Jesus came and died for somebody else, that's the fulfillment that I'm looking for and I'm searching. And those conversations feel better than any sack, any Super Bowl ring, anything that you could ever imagine because that's something that are deposited into their, to their life. That's something that they take with them forever. And it's not my job to convert people to Christians, but if I'm in a position in which I can at least make them wonder, what, what is it about Adrian and, and what he believes? Like, there's something there. That's, that's all that I want. I want people to think because the only way the walk is genuine is if you truly commit. And I don't want you to commit based off of what it is that I said. Like, this has to be something for you. That's why the moment that I had in my living room was so real because that's the moment that I decided to commit. Mm. Like, no, no, oh yeah, I'm here, Jesus, and then I'm over there. No, I, I'm, I'm committed. Like, this is what I really want to do because this is what I know, like, fulfills me. This is why I'm here. This is my purpose. And it's so much more than just football. So I became a Christian because Jesus said he was going to save my life. I became a Christian because I knew that I was lost and I needed help and I needed direction. And to be honest, what I realized in a later walk in my life, I became a Christian because he's the only person who can give me fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And in those three things and those three ingredients, like where I'm at right now, I want people who are younger than me to get that before they're at 32, 33, you know? Get that 10 year, 10 year jump start. I know. I'm 10 <laughs> years older than the rookies in my locker room. It's really crazy because oh. I remember being that guy. but. You know, just why not? I don't want to. I don't want to hold on to anything. I want to be a sower. I want to spread every every seed that God gives me. I want to spread out to other people, and you never know what can manifest from it. You are such an inspiration. Thanks so much for sitting <laughs> down with us. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. I really do.